Hi, my name's uh, Dave Kadish. This is my uh, 1976 Piper Lance. Recently, we checked out a beautiful Piper Lance. The Piper Lance is the retractable gear version of the Piper Cherokee 6, and Piper started building these babies back in 1975. This particular one is a 1976 model, so you get the best of both worlds. Some unique features to the Piper Lance, you've got the Hershey bar wing, and you've also got air conditioning in this airplane. Stay tuned and we'll hear more about it from the owner, David. A little bit about myself, uh, I learned to fly, or started to learn to fly in 1985 in a Piper Tomahawk uh, when I was in the Air Force in Torrejon Air Force Base in Spain. Kind of ran out of money, uh, so I quit flying and about 30 years later, I took my son down to the Rome Air Show and just seeing those airplanes flying around again and I just got completely bit again by the aviation bug. So I bought another Piper Tomahawk, uh, managed to finish my private pilot's license here at uh, KLZU. After I finished, I was like, well, you know, I have a wife and four kids and they're definitely not gonna fit in a two-seat Piper Tomahawk. So uh, I started looking for a larger aircraft, which can hold six people like the Piper Lance. Uh, I got a pretty good deal on it. Uh, the guy had, uh, hadn't really flown it that much. He was retired military and he lost his medical and he just kind of went outside and looked at it and couldn't fly it and finally his wife told him to sell the airplane. So I got lucky and picked it up at a good price and flew it back here to uh, KLZU. Actually the instructor flew it back to LZU. I flew the Tomahawk back to KLZU because I still didn't have, wasn't signed off on the high performance. After that I, I realized how big a difference the Piper Lance is from the Tomahawk and after looking at all the insurance companies, uh, some of them wanting 25 or 30 hours of instruction time just to get signed off in the uh, high performance uh, category, I managed to find one with 10 hours. So I went ahead and flew off the 10 hours, got, got signed off, started taking the family around to, uh, went to Florida, North Carolina, South Carolina. And then I decided that the uh, instruments, uh, you know, the, the glass pan, the uh, steam gauges from 1976 were, uh, probably uh, a little bit old school and I needed to kind of upgrade. So I went ahead and it took four months, but I went ahead and got a complete glass panel put in the airplane. In 1985, you know, the economy wasn't, wasn't the greatest. We always have those years of bad economy. I was kind of jumping around job to job to job, you know, working at McDonald's and then going somewhere else for a little bit more. And I really didn't have any direction in life. And I said, you know what? I think maybe the service will give me some direction, which it did. So I, I went down, I told the recruiter, hey, what's the quickest? because uh, different jobs have different times you go to basic training. I said, hey, what's the quickest job to get me to basic training right now? And he said, uh, aircraft armament system specialist. So I went ahead and signed up. I was gone in about four days. Back then they had Tomahawks and Cessna 150s and what they would do, they really didn't make a lot of money. It was kind of non-profit. So the rates to rent the airplane and the instructor was really inexpensive compared to, even now compared to, you know, the ratio inflation, of course. But so when I was uh, stationed at Torhorn Air Force Base working F-16s, fighters they had a aero club there and you know I was only an E1 which you know back then in 85 you made very little money as an E1 so I was spending all my money learning to fly but I just I just didn't have enough to finish. Flight schools charge you rental fee on the airplane then they charge you for the instructor and then of course you're fighting all the other students at the at the flight school for air, for time instructor time and, and airplane time and I, you know when I added it all up how much it was going to cost to do average of what 60 hours 65 you know, they say you can do it in 40, but nobody does it in 40, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's not realistic, right? So when I added up the 65 times the instructor, times the airplane, my son 65 and, and 65 with the instructor, it was less expensive to buy the airplane. But beyond that, anytime we wanted to go, it was our airplane. As long as the weather was good and the instructor was available, we go. There's no, oh, he's scheduled today. Oh, the airplane's down for maintenance. The airplane's not available. So it's much easier much better. My son is down at Middle Georgia University in Macon studying to be an airline transport pilot. Now if you know anything about the ATP rating, if you go to ATP school over here, you need 1500 hours total after you graduate to be an ATP. If you go to an FAA approved school college, you only need a um, thousand hours. It's 500 hours less. Typically you graduate with about uh, 500 to 600 hours with your ATP from either ATP or the college. So you have to fly all those other hours before you can get hired. So having the Tomahawk, he can go on coffee runs and hamburger runs because when they look at your log, well, they don't go, well, which one was in the Tomahawk, which one was in the flight school airplane, which one was in, um, you know, whatever else you're doing. So that's helping him build the hours so that when he graduates, he'll be really close 
to all already having a thousand hours. A couple of things, you know, you, when you get ready to buy an airplane, you need to think about the mission you're going to do with the airplane. You know, if you if you're going to carry six people a lot, then don't buy a four seater because you're going to always leave two people home, right? And if you're going to do just short hops all over the place, you probably don't need an airplane that has tons and tons of range because you're never you're never going to use it, right? So I started looking at airplanes mainly for six seats, which is usually a Bonanza, uh, Cessna two tens. Piper Lance, Piper Saratoga. And when you look at all of them, you know, the Bonanza is very, very expensive. I mean, even a Bonanza in terrible shape is, is top, of, you know, it's big money, right? The Cessnas, I'm just not a big fan of high wing because I've always flown low wings and I just, it's personal preference, but I, I just don't like high wings. So that kind of cut that one out. And that kind of left me with a Lance and the Saratoga. Now the Saratoga has a, has a tapered wing uh, a little bit different than the Hershey bar wing, and, and but it's also lost some carrying capacity because of it. So typically their useful loads are 1,100 to 1,200 pounds. And the Lance series is usually about 1,300 pounds. Now, a couple things of the Lance, from 76 to 77, uh, it's a straight tail, right? From 78 to 79, and then they went to the Saratoga in 80, it's a T-tail. And a lot of people complain with a T-tail that it, it handles kind of funny. It's weird to say that because I have a Tomahawk, which is also T-tail, but they say, you know, the elevator is not effective until you get to a certain airspeed. So a lot of people don't like the T-tail because it tends to kind of lurch off the runway. Now, this, this is just stuff I'm reading. I'm not doing an engineering analysis on it. A lot of people like the T-tail, right? So I decided I want a low tail and I, I kind of went on trade a plane, Barnstormers, even Craigslist. I mean, when you look for an airplane, you really have to look a lot of different places because everyone's doing the same thing. Everyone's looking at all these places and it's, it, there's limited supply of airplanes. I actually found out about it on trade plane and the thing about airplanes on trade plane if you don't call probably in the first five minutes that you see the, the ad for a lot of the airplanes, not all of them, it's gone already. You know, so like the second I saw it, had a really good price. I knew it was going to need, you know, a little bit of work because it hadn't flown that much in, in the last six or seven years. Um, I called the guy and found out, you know, his story and it was, the airport's only about an hour and a half flight from here. It's, it was in North Carolina, so it went right away. I gotta say something really important. You need to pre-buy your airplane. Airplanes in our cars, first of all, that can pull over if something goes wrong, but there's so many things that can go wrong. And just because the guy says, well, it's been well-maintained, that's not the same as a mechanic going through the airplane, checking the compressions, checking lubrication, checking that everything's rigged correctly you know, the engine's good and the avionics and you know, everything, ADs, all the ADs are complied with. So yes, I hired someone there on the field to do a pre-buy inspection. There was no way I was gonna even think about buying it. And I made it contingent, the offer, on passing a pre-buy inspection. $1,300 investment compared to a 60, 70, $80,000 investment, that's gonna cost you another 40 grand later, that's, it's no brainer. I try and fly two, three times a month. Um, you know, when we have spring breaks, you know, we take the airplane to Florida or Orlando or Sarasota. Uh, three day weekends, you know, we go to North Carolina, go to Savannah. I pretty much, you know, I actually only have about five people on the plane now because my son is in college at MGA, has the Tomahawk. So, but it just means we can carry a few more bags, which is nice because we don't have the extra person. Um, I don't always get to fly. You know, I own a freight forwarding company and, I, and I'm pretty busy with, especially with uh, COVID and PPE and, and the air rates and ocean, all the craziness going on with the supply chain right now. So. I've flown a little bit less recently than I'd like to, but I, I try and go two, three times a month at least. One thing about the Lance is a 300 horsepower uh, fuel injected engine, IO540. Uh, typical cruise is about 150 knots. Uh, you wanna save some fuel, you can you know do 140 or do 135. It's, it's a trade-off. You either go fast and burn a lot of gas or you go slow and save the gas. So it's kind of up to you. So typically, I usually probably do about 135, 140. I don't go you know full throttle. I don't, I don't do the 150. Performance is pretty good. Uh, you know, on, on takeoff fully loaded, it's not bad. I mean, uh, landing is fine. Uh, the only thing about a Lance, like between a Lance and like smaller airplanes, like Warriors, Archers, even the Tomahawk is that, you know, the glide ratio is just not the same. If you cut the power in this airplane, you're coming down. I mean, you're coming down quick. Um, the old joke everyone likes to say is that if you threw a brick out the window that you'd get down before the brick got down. So yeah. It, you know, it, it glides, they all glide. I don't mean it's not a glider, it is. But it, it's not like your smaller aircraft. It's gonna come down quick. My father was a pilot and my family was pretty supportive. I mean, you know, when you tell them how much, fly, you know, aviation costs, it's, it, you know, it's not like having a hobby fixing your car. It's a lot more money. So had to kind of get past that a little bit, but uh, they were really supportive. And it's kind of, this is like my, 
you know, I've, I have a lot of stress in my life. I mean, I own a company and whatever. And you know, when you get in your airplane, and you know, when you get in your airplane, I don't care if you're only at 500 feet as you're climbing to six, 7,000, you don't have a care in the world. I mean, you're away from it all. Nobody can get to you. Nobody can touch you. Your phone can't ring usually 90% of the time. You're just, the leash is gone. You're, you're free. And, and my family knows how important it is that I, I have some kind of release, you know, and, and this is it right here. If we don't talk about money, I mean, you know, a Malibu or a Meridian, you know, or even a Pilatus would be wonderful, but you know, I don't see that necessarily in my future. So the plan with the Lance is the, the avionics are done, is to redo the interior, put some paint on it, eventually, uh, you know, rebuild the, you know, overhaul the engine. And it's probably a 30 year airplane for me. I mean, there's no, you know, it does everything I want to do. It, ha it has the right speed. It has the right carrying capacity. I'm never going to be, you know, work, uh, as a pilot for a living. I'm going to get my instrument. I don't even think I need a commercial because I'm not going to do it for hire. I mean, I want the instrument so I'm not looking at the sky with a cloud and that, you know, I can't fly today. That's the main thing, which happens a lot, right? So th this, this airplane will probably fit my needs for, I mean, a really long time.